Hello guys, uh, welcome back again to On Location. Today I am at a, it's kind of like a three-part kind of mini-series I'm going to be doing with this single video. See if I can kind of um, cram all this different kinds of locations in. But uh, the only reason I'm doing that is because they're all actually connected. And it's uh, the Phillips Park, Beaver Creek Wetland Nature Reserve, and Dane Mudder Prairie. So Phillips Park is a very, very small, uh, just little park that has a gravel parking lot. Um, there's a little pond that kind of attracts different waterfowl. Um, I've typically seen there. There's always Canada geese pretty much all year there. Um, on and off, I'll see like great blue herons there, uh, belted kingfisher. And it also has a restored uh, red barn that's situated right next to the pond there. And that was donated to the local park district in 1990 by none other than the Phillips family. Then the next place is probably the biggest one out of the three is uh, Beaver Creek Wetland Nature Reserve, which is a little bit of a um, bloated title for it, but it's a very beautiful spot. Um, it's always muddy after raining, unfortunately, so we'll just see what happens here. But, I mean, it makes sense for the location just because it's a floodplain wetland. Then again, that takes you through some winding trails of some different kind of wet woods, and it takes you around some prairies and some loot trails, and it has a nice observation deck at the end that's usually surrounded by mud on the trail. So we'll see how far we can get, um, what we're all, I guess, comfortable with. And then from there, the newest place, which was just uh, announced and opened to the public in 2018, is Dane Mudder Prairie, which is a gorgeous example of prairie habitat that's been luckily uh, restored for the public. And so that's the place I've explored the least out of the, the three, and it's probably the place I'm going to spend the most time at, just, just so I can get uh, photographs of maybe some prairie birds, uh, different kinds of wildflowers, and different prairie plants that are blooming there. So regardless, there's going to be a lot to keep us busy for this uh, evening and we'll see how it goes and of course as always if the lighting is just right and the location the spot in the mat is just right uh, we might even get like a sunset composition would be awesome but we're gonna see now in terms of photographic subjects uh, there's tons of different wildlife this place is a popular spot for the annual Audubon bird count uh, both and spring and during the winter time in cri like Christmas and it's a, just a great spot for seeing uh, migrants as they come through either north or south depending on which direction time of year it is. Um, it's also pretty common to see different kinds of mammals. The marsh and wet prairies, the uh, the woodland pools, there's creeks, scrub shrub wetlands. So it's got just it's basically just centered around wetlands but it's got so much going on there habitat wise uh, specifically. And of course the more different diversity in habitats you have uh, the greater chances of viewing and getting a bigger diversity of wildlife as you can which would be really helpful. Now this is a location I went to um, back in my early days when I was just out cycling and I had no car or license. So it was very close to my house and it just made it really helpful to kind of get out all different times of the year, different seasons that I've seen this place in. And it just helps to it really cultivate, I guess, that nature aspect that I just, you know, I now currently enjoy so much. Um, so, but every time I come back here, it's, it's a pretty familiar spot, I would say, for me but it's always just great coming back and you're always gonna see something different uh, no matter what time of year. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of other different kinds of wildlife like nocturnal wildlife. Um, there's also barred owls. If you're lucky, you might even see some great horned owls here. We'll, we'll hold our breath on that at least, but um, we'll be fortunate enough to see maybe a heron or even a hawk of any type. Um, yeah, we'll just see what happens, I guess. So let's get started. made it, Dane Motor Prairie, so looks like a massive sea of yellow over there, but I'm going to see what I can do.
So right now I'm kind of in between all these different birds at the uh, wetland reserve and I got my wildlife set up here. I've been focusing on some uh, damselflies that are just hanging out here on the leaves and different kinds of foliage around me but it's just kind of a bummer. Um, I guess for the more adventurous type this would be cool which I mean I would be but normally I'm, I'm wearing my regular hiking boots. The trail many many years ago because I've gone here for so long it used to be you could walk right through this but now it's just been so overgrown you know the habitats changed and now it's just been overrun which I mean is at the end of the day is good because I'd rather have it be wetlands than just foot trails but for access purposes uh, it's just kind of a bummer because now it's just really wet it's like a wet woods it's marshy and I can't really make it to the other side so I could try and go around the other side of the loop trail and see if that's less muddy or anything like that and see if I can make it to the observation trail or tower so far the birds aren't really cooperating um, as much as I'd hope but I got last bit of daylight left I got about an hour and 20 minutes or so and let's see what else I can find here at the reserve and we might go to Phillips Great blue herons are barking too. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, see you in a bit. So it looks like unfortunately this side of the loop trail to the observation tower has been overgrown as well and it's um, fairly high water like just above ankle from the looks of it uh, it's very very muddy and uh, I'm not sure if I want to disturb all the different uh, aquatic life or at least all these different frogs because I've just been seeing so many of them so yeah that kind of squanders most of my chances here unfortunately um, I was hoping for a little more productive day but uh, I'm not totally giving up yet. I have about an hour left of daylight and there's a couple more um, small trails that take me around the creek that I can visit. And even then I might just settle upon doing a long exposure of the Beaver Creek. I don't know. We'll see. Um, the sunset might be something worthwhile. Um, it's hard to tell just because there's been so much cloud coverage as well. And yeah. And then we'll probably end the day with Phillips Park and we'll see if there's any birds or anything of that sort over there. So yeah. We'll see. All right, guys, I found it kind of like a secret route. I guess it's the new path that they carved through the uh, reserve here. And it's still pretty overgrown by my standards. I say it's up to my almost my waistline and just uh, foliage and I'm dodging all these different uh, like green tree frogs and uh, t different damselflies and but I finally made it to this observation tower um, it's quite a sight every time I come back it's always something to really just marvel at and see the different um, just the marshy kind of wetland pond it's just wrapped around it here I'll show you so it's everything over here but it's just always such a beautiful sight. Um, you usually see typically like different kinds of mallards or different mallard ducks, I mean, just in the pond. Other than that, not too much else. Um, you can see red winged blackbirds um, on occasion because there's just a lot of cattails. Um, it's basically a cattail marsh, really. And But it's just such a beautiful sight and I always like to see it. And I just like the way it kind of wraps around and curves and it follows the contours of the trail as well on either direction. But that side's overgrown, and it's waterlogged, like I said. This side, there's actually a trail, thankfully. Um, so, yeah, it's a nice little view. Um, even if I take a photo or otherwise, I just like, you know, I just like to be up here and just enjoy it for what it is.
All right, guys, appearance concludes uh, today's trip. It's been a lot of ground to cover, and I hope I covered all the bases of it mainly and shown you a variety of different uh, habitats like prairie and uh, various kind of scrub, shrub, wetlands. But yeah, I didn't get too many photos, but the ones I did get, uh, I'm pretty, pretty happy with, I would say. So uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, if you want to support me in all my different travels and journeys like I do here, and you find them entertaining or educational, uh, make sure to check out my website. It's at ryanltaylor.com, where you can buy various different prints and keepsakes of the photos you see in this video and other videos and you know just any photo I have for my entire um, career on my website. So you can purchase some there. So if you want to support me, that'd be very much appreciated. All right, that's pretty much it. So thank you for exploring with me and have a good day, guys. Thank you.